So the next session, we are going to talk about how do you politely speak up in a meeting and share your ideas. And sometimes, you know, my clients, they, they said, well, Michelle, I got a feedback from my manager. And they said, uh, I should speak up more in meetings. And then I said, why you don't? Well, there are many different reasons. That sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, I don't have a chance to speak because other people speak very fast and nonstop. English is not my first language. When I have something, I prepare myself, I want to say, then it's already passed. Or sometimes people worry about, oh, my idea is not good. I, I'm, maybe people already thought about this. Uh, it's not adding value to the conversation. Or people will laugh at me. This is this a stupid idea or something. Or sometimes uh, people say it's hard to express myself in a meeting. A lot of times, uh, you know, when I'm trying to say something, people may not be able to understand me easily. So I just uh, don't waste uh, anybody's time and I keep myself uh, silent. When you are not speaking up in a meeting, well, as we said, right, you probably will be viewed that you are not particip participating. You don't get uh, gain the kind of visibility or ideas, or your thoughts, you are not really sharing it out. So managers really encourage our people, well, speak up, share your ideas. Then how do you do that? The first thing is, if you have those negative thoughts, right, telling yourself, oh, my ideas are not good, it's, uh, people will think I'm stupid, or uh, everybody already knows this, I, I shouldn't say anything. Or sometimes when I have a question, I assume everybody, they already know this, and I'm the only one have such a stupid question, right? Or I don't want people to know that I even don't know this. Research shows that a lot of people have the negative self-talk, not just to people uh, from Asia. It's also in the US, uh, many Americans have the same kind of uh, negative self-talk. In a university, top university like MIT, uh, they did some research. Well, when the students, uh, nobody asked questions, when there was one person raised hand and asked one question, and all the other people were feeling, oh, I'm so glad that he asked this question because I had the same question. I'm just too shy to ask. Right. Uh, so this kind of things happens a lot. Maybe you have a good idea or maybe you have a question. Uh, if you don't share, you never get it addressed or you never have a chance to contribute that. So think about yourself. What do I want to do? Well, you prepare your mindset before you go to the meeting. Now, I know I'm not perfect. My English has an accent. I may make the grammar mistakes. I, you know, contribute my ideas so that I can gain more visibility and I, I want to be part of a team, etc. And I want to be here to learn. I want to see this, my sharing as a learning opportunity. So this can help you to prepare your mindset and uh, accept yourself for not being perfect. Even though sometimes you said something wrong, that's totally okay. Then how do you speak up in a meeting? Just look at the chat to see if there's anything we need to talk about. Oh yeah, I want to address this one. It's great. This is a very good feedback on, you know, I see individual contributors should also give feedbacks to manager or the meeting moderator that as, as somebody hosting this mm -hmm. meeting, you can encourage everyone to talk and you can give people the time to talk. Uh, this is the one technique we use a lot. When I coach people, I tell them, if you feel it's impolite to interrupt others, uh, you have something you want to say, but you cannot insert yourself in, you can talk to the meeting host. Uh, they can help, they can pause and say, ask, does anybody have something to talk or to share or anybody have questions? Or the, the meeting host can say, well, everybody have five minutes to share their ideas, S make turns. Everybody have an opportunity in the room to talk. This is a great, thank you. All right. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to speak up in a meeting. If you can find a natural pause that is good, listen for when the speaker kind of slows down and seems to kind of stop a bit, or when they actually have a down pitch. Like in the speech, they'll be talking and then all of a sudden they'll kind of drop at the end and that kind of means I'm finished. So listen for that as well. On video here, you can see me if you're on video, raising your hand if there's not too many people that they can actually you know, see, see enough of the participants. Raising your hand is a good signal. 
the speaker may actually just kind of stop and, and ask if you have a question, or they may ask you to hold the question till later or put it in the chat if it's a larger group. Polite ways to interrupt. You can always say, excuse me. Excuse me is kind of the universal, like I want to interrupt something. You can use the person's name. You might just say, um, excuse me, Nicole, can I ask a question? Um, excuse me, Michelle, can I ask a question? And that is a very polite, inappropriate way to do that. Excuse me, can I add something? So sometimes you do just have to jump in and interrupt, especially with people who talk and talk and talk and really um, you know, aren't opening the door for others to add. You might just need to stop, excuse me, and that you know, will we'll stop that. Um, excuse me, could I interrupt for a moment? That's another way. Excuse me, um, I agree with you, but, so those are all polite, but remember, raise your hand if you can and insert excuse me in there, and that is just fine. All right, moving along to how to express yourself so others understand you. A lot of people will say, well, people just don't understand me when I speak. Well, you need to kind of take control of that situation. Your accent might not be perfect. You're doing the best you can. And you might need to kind of take some control and say, well, maybe I'm speaking too fast. Maybe I'm just feeling really nervous and I'm just like, oh my God, like, Take a breath, a couple of breaths, and slow yourself down. A lot of times second language speakers tend to speak a lot faster when they're nervous, or they speak faster because they think it makes them sound more fluent when it just makes them more difficult to understand. So slow down if people are having trouble understanding you. Simplify your speech. Avoid overly complex sentences. Remember this is, the, the idea is to communicate your ideas in a fairly quick way so other people easily understand you. Avoid thinking that conversation is a TOEFL exam where you're trying to use the largest, most impressive grammar and words possible. Bring it down. Um, studies have shown that when they look at the speech level of politicians, of our president, our former president, other presidents, other politicians, they find that they tend to speak in a range of between a sixth and an eighth grade level. So they're speaking with a grammar and a word choice that is very understandable to people who are 12 to 14 years of age. So you also want to think about that too. The idea is not to impress people with your speech, but that to communicate your ideas clearly and easily to them. So simplify things. Oh, especially for Chinese, pay attention to your verb tenses when you're talking. It's a little bit confusing when you start talking in the past tense and all of a sudden you're in the present and we kind of get lost because we can't figure out if you're still talking about the past or if we're in another story now. It's like, be very careful and, and monitor yourself. If you're talking about something that happened before, stay in the past tense. Don't forget those ED endings in past tense verbs. And also for Chinese, make sure to pronounce all the syllables in the longer words. Make sure not to leave out the middle ones. Uh, words like this. I sometimes hear Chinese speakers say something like government. Make sure it's government. You get all three of those syllables. Don't leave out the middle ones. Opportunity, like opportunity. Slow yourself down and make sure you get all those syllables in there. I've heard understand a lot. Understand? No, understand. So just a, a, just a little quick pronunciation hint there. I know those longer words are kind of tricky, but uh, slow down, it'll be easier to get them. Avoid upspeak. Oh, I hear so much talk about this, and even amongst native speakers. I hear a lot of speech therapists talking about this recently. If you are using a rising pitch, if your tone is going up, you are generally communicating that you're asking a question or that you are unsure of something or that you are not confident. And especially in a business situation, you do not want to convey that you are not confident in what you're saying. So listen and see if you can hear it. Hi, I'm Nicole Kaup. 
Well, I have a hard time doing this. <laughs> that didn't actually sound convincing to me either. I'm Nicole Cow. Ah, I can't do it. When you're kind of putting that question up tone on things, it, it, I'm kind of like, do you know the answer? Do you not? Are you asking me a question or are you just lacking in self-confidence? So make sure that when you say something, you say it like, yes, I know what I'm talking about. There are 50 states in the United States and you go down at the end because you are confident in that. Versus there are 50 states in the United States. You know, as you're kind of going up there and you're saying like, I don't know. So careful there, that's called up speak. All right, and if you can, you know that you're gonna have a meeting, it's gonna be a virtual meeting. See if you can prepare ahead of time, prepare, prepare some questions, maybe print out that sheet that we're gonna send you that has uh, some different questions you can talk to strangers about and colleagues about. So I would recommend that. Okay, you're in charge of the conversation, check for understanding. If you're talking to somebody, they are most likely looking at you and smiling if they are understanding you. They're happy to be present, they like talking to you, they're smiling, they have a good expression on their face, and they're making eye contact. They're giving you cues that they're following. They're saying, uh-huh, they're nodding their head, right? Uh-huh, okay. They're like, they're giving you cues, they're participating in the conversation with you. That means they're understanding, they're following you. They want you to speak more. And when you've finished your, your sentence, you'll notice that they respond fairly quickly when you finish talking. When people don't understand, their face will show it. They will look confused. They might seem kind of worried. They, they just don't know what's going on. They may stay silent when you're talking. They, they're, they're not saying, uh-huh, they're not shaking their head, they're saying nothing. They're just kind of wondering what to do. And when you finish, there might be a very long pause because they, they don't know what to say. So again, try to take charge of that. And when you see that look of confusion on someone's face, ask if they understand. Maybe stop yourself and say, does that make sense? Are you following me? And they might say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, can you repeat that? And then that's your cue to take a breath and slow down and try to repeat it again, maybe choose some different words. And if you're still not able to communicate, ask them if you can email it. Would it be okay if I emailed you my thoughts? And they will probably say, yes, please. Okay, so also take on that responsibility of, of making sure that people are understanding you, ask them. Is it clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, does that make sense? We like that expression a lot. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? We say it a lot. 